In today's digital age, if you are serious about making analog mixtape, you probably know the Pareto principle behind it, where you can easily enjoy 80% of the reward with 20% of the effort. However, unlocking the remaining 20% of the reward may require 80% of the effort. The good news is, you will not miss too much if you just want to experience the fun of old-school lo-fi that common people agree on. The bad news is, once you have your tape recorder serviced and calibrated, you are already climbing the rocks of hi-fi. The rest of the journey is all about pursuing the same technical preciseness throughout your mixtaping workflow, which is not as simple as it seems. So, if this is what you care about, stay tuned. When you load a blank tape into a recorder, you've got a classic analog system ready for recording your audio programs. Its capacity is measured in two physical dimensions which are dynamic range and tape length. The dynamic range is the linear span between the noise floor and the saturation ceiling. When begin recording, you try to adjust the recording level, hoping to fully utilize the system's potential. But as time goes on, you may be surprised if any louder passages break through the ceiling, or quieter passages fall well below the noise floor. If you constantly adjust the level on the go, you will act as an artificial compressor with poor performance, or otherwise, you have to restart the recording with a refined estimation, which is a frustrating trial and error approach. On the other hand, the total duration of your audio programs might not match the given tape length exactly, especially for a double-sided tape, which is another practical pain. Nowadays, when using digital audio files as new audio source, you can automatically assume that a computer can be of a great help. Yes, computer is not only a new media player, but also a precise audio analyzer, capable of identifying peak levels, unifying volumes, adjusting dynamic ranges, and even fitting tape length. This so-called format-specific mastering is typically accomplished by using a general-purpose digital audio workstation. If you have done this a few times, you may find that the procedure for each mixtape project is defined and repeatable. Using a general-purpose tool means repeating the same step-by-step -step procedure with limited convenience. If your enthusiasm for creating mixtapes depends heavily on tool efficiency, a dedicated software tool that automates the workflow may meet your needs better. The Mixtape Nerd app was developed based on a series of nerdy efforts pursuing a streamlined mixtaping experience. You drag and drop audio files to start building a mixtape project. The app will pre-analyze all the audio files on behalf of you and summarize their level dynamics in multiple standard metrics. The collected data will offer substantial support for the coming up optimizations, but don't be too urged to engage any of these audio processors at this moment because you haven't told the app anything about the tape and recorder you're going to use. Apparently, the app doesn't understand brands and models. Instead, it only needs to know two numeric parameters about your analog tape recording system, which are MOL stands for Maximum Output Level in Decibels, and SNR stands for Signal to Noise Ratio in Decibels. In case you are unfamiliar with the two terms, the app comes with built-in documentation showing a few ways of estimation, specifically for using compact cassette tape and deck. The app also provides a wizard for your convenience. Yet, there is one more important thing to mention, which is about the digital headroom. This is not a specific topic for analog tape recording here, but more of a general common sense in digital mastering, and the very first step before doing any digital mastering processes, Regardless of what software tool you are going to use, that is, you need to reduce the amplitudes of all the audio files by at least 6 to 10 dBs in order to pre-reserve extra headrooms for the mastering process to work with, avoiding possible clipping distortions introduced. You can ask this app to do so on behalf of you. So, you will end up with giving the app three parameters, which are MOL and SNR of your tape recording system and the digital headroom you want to reserve. You can simply drag the three sliders on the app's GUI to set them. Now, the app has gathered sufficient information about your target tape recording system and your source audio files, making it ready for optimizing your mixtape project under your control. It is highly recommended to enable one of the four normalizers to have the levels of all the audio files unified automatically, as well as to have the potential of the tape fully utilized. 
This is a lossless gain stage and is often the only processor you may want to engage. But if the dynamic range of your original digital audio exceeds the tape's dynamic range, especially if the quiet passages are too low to surpass the tape hiss, you can optionally enable one of the three compressors to let the app selectively boost the quiet passages. Alternatively, you can also use one of the four standard noise reduction encoders provided by this app if your tape recorder does not have one built in. When recording on compact cassette tape, if the recorder does not provide independent EQ setting from bias setting, you can use the app's built-in EQ translators as a workaround. Sometimes when you record a mixtape for mobile playback, such as in car or other noisy environments, you can deliberately engage one of the three compressors and try to squash it aggressively. Thus, the mixtape produced this way could be better enjoyed outdoor. When curating a mixtape project, you can specify the tape length, and then, have the app automatically arrange all the audio files to best fit, either on both sides equally or on one side more than another. You can check the status bars to see how good the fitting result will be. In case a perfect fitting is inviable, additional tools are provided for adjusting the total length, including automatic silence padding or trimming, and auto-fading out or cross-fading. When you've connected your tape recorder to the computer, you can let the app generate a test tone, with which you can adjust the recorder's input level knob and or the computer's output audio volume control, until level meter on the tape recorder is pointing to its zero mark. This way, you can easily and precisely align the computer and the tape recorder to a common reference audio level. In the finishing stage, you can preview, test, and refine the result in real time and fine tune the settings if necessary. Upon completion, the mixtape project can be exported as a master audio file per side for offline duplication, with an optional auxiliary audio file which contains a reference test tone for calibrating the duplication system. Alternatively, a mixtape project can also be played within the app for real time tape recording optionally driving the sound card in exclusive mode for the shortest and cleanest audio path. Upon initial use, this app starts as a basic playlist app, with all the mixtape enhancements disengaged by default. This allows the app to be easily integrated into your existing mixtaping workflow. Afterwards, the mixtape enhancement features can be engaged one at a time for experimenting and evaluating, which allows for progressively picking up the new workflow. The app comes with embedded documentation to help the user using each function, along with an online video demo, but please note, getting started is not effortless since it requires basic understanding of analog tape recording, as well as familiarizing the app's UI. But once the initial learning curve has been overcome, no significant efforts will be needed for repeating the new workflow. This video is just a brief introduction of the Mixtape Nerd software app which covers a few technical considerations beyond making a casual fun of analog mixtape. A lot more in-depth details are provided by another longer video. The app is available on the online store of Apple or Microsoft. It requires at least Mac OS 10 or Windows 10 and a computer with audio output port. For more information, please visit the app's webpage. Thanks for watching.